And we're back with some more base loving. It's been a while, but let's have a look at this base. This base was sent in by Ze E, and it's called Howard. This base is, there's a lot of symmetry going on here. At the same time, they also have a giant sour gas boiler. But let's just have a, a quick look at this industrial sauna because this took a lot of time and effort. Uh, reason being, if we check on the gas overlay, you'll see there's gas in here, there's gas around the outside edge, but in the middle, nothing as in the vacuum seal to this whole area. And then to add uh, a little bit of spice to the whole thing, it turns out their, uh, their metal refineries are way up here. And all of the resources or all the oil comes down here, spins around this area to get cooled down before going back up. It's just uh, doing the industrial sauna, but not actually putting the, the metal refineries in there. But you'll notice the whole thing is perfectly symmetrical. Power transformers, power transformers, they're all mirror imaged out of each other's on each side. Very, very nice way of doing things. Uh, also the the coolant, these two aqua tuners here, they provide cooling for, well, most of the base and the oxygen. This flows through here to cool down the oxygen supply, which, actually let's have a quick look at this. This uses the, uh, a little bit of a trick here. Because of the way gas is spawned out of electrolyzers, what you can do is, if you put some water or liquid on top of here and put gas tiles to the side, the oxygen will get shunted out to the left and right, whereas the hydrogen will get forced out the top. And it doesn't overpressurize the electrolyzer. So you see the electrolyzer can yeah, just keep going and going and going. The only thing that stops it is the automation that's hooked up to it. So this way you can just get as much oxygen or hydrogen, well, process as much water as you want, and it will never overpressurize. Nice way of doing things. Oh, there's some weird thing going on here that I've been trying to figure out. Oh, wait, I got this, I got this. All right, so what happens here is, this is just a little bit of a, a flip switch setup. What happens is when this draws power, it draws power from, say, this side, or this ba jumbo battery. When this jumbo battery goes below a certain point, it switches back, or when this uh, battery is fully charged, though, it switches back over to the smart battery. So every time the smart battery maxes out, it keeps drawing from the smart battery. Once the smart battery is completely drained, or almost completely drained, it switches back over to this jumbo. And then it just keeps swapping back and forth so that it won't overcharge the wire. It's just a way of getting an awful lot of power down one more wire than you would really normally be able to do. And... Yeah, that's actually a smart way of doing things. Too much effort for me, I'd be too lazy. Okay, next up, just above this, we've got the main core base. This is your sort of standard box design, so the whole thing's boxed in. The only way out is to atmosphere docks on the left and right. And this whole place is, of course, absolutely bathed in lots and lots of decor. Uh, you've got genius metal sculptures just tossed around the place everywhere, all made out of gold, of course. The whole thing, you'll also notice, is very symmetrical. You've got your... Eight beds on each side, 16 duplicates, of course. Uh, then cooking in the center. Actually, how do they store the food here? Ooh, this is a nice one. This is, okay, this is done by weight. If there is 100 kilos or more of pepper bread on this one tile, on this weight plate, it goes, okay, we've got enough food, and it turns off the, uh, the gas range. So just a very simple way of making sure you have enough food. As well as I think the duplicates can come along here and grab it from this corner, or they stand on that ladder tile and they can grab the food out diagonally. Of course, it's perfectly symmetrical as well. We've got your jumping joys, water cooler in the middle, and a bunch of nice statues. But I think, yeah, and over here is where they store all the all the pinched pepper nuts and the seaweed grain to make that pepper bread. That's... I'm stealing that idea for the weight plate. You actually stop making food once you've hit a certain amount. That's actually really nice. That make, means your calories don't get ridiculously out of control. You are going to end up with way too much sleep wheat and uh, grains, but, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other. Just above this base, we've got this. It's a copper taming volcano. And this one is one of those ones where, I feel check the rails here, all the copper that pops out of this, it falls down into this uh, petroleum at the bottom, then it gets sucked up, thrown into the conveyor loader, and it gets sent on the long way around. You'll notice that there's metal tiles and diamond tiles all the way around here to soak out the heat. And then once it gets below a certain temperature set by this temperature sensor down here, 124, then once it goes below that, it's let out that conveyor shut off. The conveyor shut off will actually let it out the door. Now, that all gets dumped over here, and this is a trick they use a couple of times. That hot metal is going to be about 124 degrees, so it goes through here, and this is actually the cooling pool for the steam turbine. So you're going to be keeping that cool anyway, so why not just run the copper through it first and help cool it off? So you'll notice here... All the cooling liquid goes through here and keeps this entire area cool, and it also cools down the copper as it comes out. Just double service. Of course, that takes us to this monstrosity. Now, you may be wondering what all of this is. I definitely did. I'm like, why? Why is there that much automation? That seems like an incredible amount of automation. Well, that all links back to here, and it... And, uh... Well, okay, see if you can recognize the song, I suppose. One second. All right, I've done some fiddling with the sound, so hopefully this will work. Uh, we're going to put this on double speed. <laughs> what the 
Oh, sorry, interrupting it. <laughs> okay, I can't take that anymore. What the hell? Okay, so it, it's basically using these hammers to hammer different types of pipes that are connected up to different lengths of piping and going through glass cells just to change the sound to make a, a song. Do not ask me how they managed to time that out and, and do all of that. No, no, that is just look at the amount of automation that went into that and ribbons and planning and no, 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 no. Save game file will be linked. If you want to go and have a look through this and take it apart, go for it. Uh, I, I, I was like, nope, 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 nope. I have, I have things I want to do in the next week or so. Anyway, up here, going with the symmetrical vibe again, we've got two monuments, and then at the same time, you've got your liquid oxygen tank and your liquid hydrogen tank, completely sealed and only able to access it by transit tube access. Nice way of doing things. The uh, cooling, of course, is coming from super coolant, and that's coming from all the way up here where we've got, what, two aqua tuners on each side, cooling each one, and then one aqua tuner in the middle that actually cools down the, uh, the steam turbines on top to make sure the steam turbines don't overheat. Pretty handy way of doing things. Now, where was it? Ah, uh, yes, this up here. All right. Um, actually, let's just cover space first. This is where all the meteors are, of course, caught on top of here, and then it all gets mined up. This is a slightly different C minor design. It's much deeper. Um, also, you'll notice here that the auto sweeper is sort of tucked in here, where it can pick up all the items that drop to the bottom, and it dumps it into that conveyor loader where they all get swept away. This way, your drills are not touched, these are not touched, and this whole thing is made out of steel. And, wait a minute, where is it? They're all dipped in a little bit of petroleum. So there's a little bit of petroleum behind each one of them. Now, of course, if you're going to use this trick, remember, you've got to have a backing plate. Otherwise, that stuff will evaporate. So you'll notice the drywall there to stop that uh, liquid evaporating into space. Doesn't matter if it's on an airflow tile, no problems there. But then you've got this liquid cooling going behind it from all of these liquid pipes that go, where are they? Oh, yes, they rotate through this area. This stuff is 130 degrees, but you don't care. As long as it doesn't get above the temperature of steel, steel overheats at 275. So whole thing remains nice and cool and it harvests all the regolith. Regolith gets shunted down here and put through this system. And we don't have any regolith at the moment to play with, but the regolith passes through here and basically all the heat is drained out of it and turned into power. And all the regolith gets dumped down there for the voles to chew on. Well, not quite all of it. Some of the regolith goes down to get turned into, well, for a filtration medium. But that stuff, of course, would be too hot to go pumping through your base. So what happens first is, same recycle trick again, all of the regolith goes up here, and it gets piped through the steam turbine area. The steam turbine area is also cooled down, so this stuff comes out about, well, it's minus one there, so how much is that regolith coming out at? Ah, minus three. Jesus Christ. Keeping with the whole symmetrical vibe, you'll notice that there's three space scanners here, and if we pop over to the other side of the build, you'll notice there's another three space scanners. Uh, so that's six, so that gives you perfect co coverage. However, all of them are hooked up via not gates, or OR gates. So if this one, or this one, detects that there's meteors coming, or this one detects that there's meteors coming, the signal gets sent up here. And if this one, and this is a, oh, an AND gate. So once both this side and the other side detect it, it sends a signal here to shut the doors. And that just stops the meteors from impacting. And then, of course, you've got a little bit of solar up here to help out. Ooh, now where were we? Uh, yes. Let's have a quick look at the food production here. Do you like sleep wheat? That's... Uh, I've, I've built one of these. This takes an enormous amount of time to set up. It's just... That soil there, that's 50 kilos of igneous rock. Yeah, but you look at that. It's all 50 kilos of igneous rock. That takes way too much time and effort. I remember the last time I did one of these, it took me about 12 hours to get them finished. Then you've got to throw in the, the pips and make them plant it. No, nope, no, nope, not doing that again. And then you've got your uh, wild farms for the pet, pinch of pepper nuts, and then a whole bunch of reed fiber, because you need an awful lot of that to make insulation. All right, then you've got your poke shells down here for your lime, so you can make just ridiculously stupid amounts of steel. Uh, what was it as well? Ah, yes. Down here, I think there's the, uh, it's the natural, some natural reserve natural gas boilers, some coal, and just, this is all old reserve power, as far as I can tell. This has uh, since been surplanted. You'll notice that most of these are actually disconnected. We'll cover what's powering that in a minute. And oil biome has pretty much been sealed off and left down here to just produce its own little oil. There's uh, some cooling going on over here, though. I'm not sure why. I think this was too hot to start, but this is set to cool things down here to about 89 degrees. I can imagine it would have been important to make sure everything stayed cool because, oh, that was it. Yeah, there was a bit slight break there. That would expand the vacuum seal, everything like that. Okay. Uh, I, I imagine they didn't want this uh, plastic piping down here to melt. Okay, now where were we? Ah, uh, yes. 
over here. Okay, quick look at, say, petroleum boiler first. Volcanic powered petroleum boiler, uh, standard minor clearance design, though it's completely sealed in. There's no way in or out of there. Though, look at the uh, overlay here for a second. Let's have a look at the gas one. You'll notice a lot of vacuum sealing going on around here, like just so much vacuum sealing. Uh, it takes a long, long time to make vacuum everywhere, and this is just so much area vacuumed out. It's kind of, that's very difficult to do. Anyway, but uh, yeah, standard issue petroleum boiler design goes up through there. Where's the crude oil? Oh, yeah, crude oil comes from below, and then all of that petroleum. Well, you gotta do something with it, so why not turn it into natural gas? So, this is one of the larger, larger uh, sour gas boiler designs you're going to see. What's the rate of flow, rate of flow on this? 9.6 kilos. Yep, that seems just about right. So, that flows down here, and as it goes down, of course, it gets goes from hot to hotter to hotter to hotter to hottest and then eventually flashes into sour gas. Sour gas counter flows all the way up here uh, comes down to this point where it is super cooled. And we of course get your methane. Methane gets picked up by the liquid pump. Uh, liquid pump dumps it over here. Oh, and you can see the the super coolant or the super cooling happens from these aqua tuners over here which provide the heating. So that cools down this area which allows this to turn into liquid methane, which then gets pumped over here, and then that liquid methane flashes to natural gas, giving us, of course, oodles and oodles of power. Or you'll see here there's that leftover sulfur, though we have found a use for it in the new expansion. This sulfur at the time was, you know, it had no use, so you just sort of dump it here, and now you've got a bunch of ultra cold sulfur for no reason. And anyway, this all goes up here and gets dumped into these uh, gas pumps. All of that natural gas is pumped through here, and this is basically just to drain the last of the heat out of it. You might as well get some free power. So it's coming at what, 250? Yeah, it's coming at 250, well, to 230 on this side. And then it ends up about 128 to 124 by the time it gets past all the steam turbines. Then, doom, 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 doom. It all comes down here. And dear Lord. Yeah, that's a lot of natural gas. Try and imagine the quantity of power that's producing. Should we add it up? That can't all be on one wire. I'm pretty sure that's going to overload any wire it's put on. So the whole thing is about 72 natural gas generators, which is 57 megawatts or... God, it's been a while. What is it? Kilowatts. Yes, so it could go up to 57.6 kilowatts, which could theoretically overload that wire. Though, honestly, any base that's drawing that much power, I just can't imagine it. Um, oh, over here we've got our storage for the visco gel, which is crammed in bef between a bunch of airflow tiles. Yes, that is always one of the interesting ways to store that stuff. Can I ever find a good storage medium for visco job? Anyway, uh, over here you've got a steam vent. This one is actually just uh, all the hot steam is pumped up by these gas pumps before eventually going up here. That stuff comes out at 500 degrees. So you always need something convoluted to tame the stuff. It's it's more of a challenge than a, a fun endeavor. Down this side you have your infinite liquid storage. Just put, like There's just bottle emptiers to fill this, which is kind of crazy. Is there anything else? Oh, this one actually has a, a vent. Anyway, this is pretty simple. It's to do with gases and the ability to not delete a tile of something. So here you've got polluted oxygen, up here you've got oxygen. And then you pour the liquid in and since the liquid can't, for since the gas can't get out of the way because there's a blob of liquid there, it just sort of, nothing can escape. So the liquid just keeps pressurizing in here and manual airlocks can't overpressurize. If you tried to use normal tiles for this, they would smash. But this way you can store, how much petroleum is there? 23,000 tons of petrol of, oh wait, is that, it, it's a, it's many, many tons of petroleum. And there we have many, many tons of crude oil. And here we have just, well, a couple of tons of super coolant in each square. Just a way to store vast quantities of liquid without wasting too much time. And here's a little morb farm. Oh, look at them going, producing, producing so much polluted oxygen. Yeah, I presume this is for producing clay. Oh, I bet that's where all the regolith's going. Would you look at that? That's where the regolith was going. Ooh, ooh, ooh. One last beautiful thing I want to cover here because there's so much symmetry in this space is this up here. It's for harvesting rocket heat. The rockets land, the exhaust heats up the window tiles. The window tiles are made of diamond, of course. And then you've got this conveyor rails carrying diamond around. And it just rotates all the heat down here. And all the heat gets sucked into these two steam rooms to just generate power. Do you need the power? No. I don't think this space has needed power since that natural the sour gas boiler went out. But whatever. Exact same thing on this side. You'll notice it's... It looks disturbingly symmetrical, whatever way you look at it. I think that's the... There's a few, like, odd pieces out, but they're just, you know, not really that amazing. Not, not, ah. not really that distracting. The base looks just... Damn. That's that's what it looks like. It just looks like damn. Oh, yeah. 
let's have a quick look at the overview overlays and see what it's like. First up, a quick look at the temperature overlay. That's, yeah, it's mostly green everywhere, except that's the sleepweed, of course, growing over there in the middle left. You even kept a few of the ice biomes alive. There's, there's actually some surviving biomes. Considering the amount of building you did and the size of this base, which, bear in mind, only built with 16 duplicates, that's incredibly impressive. The plumbing overlay almost looks like a work of art. Dear Lord. <laughs> All right, that there is the cooling for the sleet wheat farm. That's the pinch of pepper nuts. Oh, wow, let's get this over here. Oh, that's all the piping for the automation. This is all of the liquid cooling for the, um, ah, the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Dear Lord. What the? That just looks... I think I speak for everyone when I say we hate you so much. I'm, I'm terrified to see what your power overlay looks like. Gas first, and the gas looks much more petite. That's actually it makes me feel a bit better. But you're, okay, except for the enormous amount of natural gas coming down here from the sour gas boiler, to be expected. Conveyor rails, yeah, there, there's only a few around. That's from the recycling of the regolith, and that's from the recycling of the power. Though, wait a minute, those aren't symmetrical. This one's higher than that one. Oh my god, you've just you've just ruined it now. <laughs> Jesus. Oh yeah, shorter rocket silos. Oh yeah, no, yeah never mind. Uh, next up, uh, let's have a quick look at the oxygen overlay. It seems there's only a little bit of oxygen in the center and none on the edges. And power overlay wise, oh wow. Okay, that's, how do you get so many straight lines everywhere? That's just, that's incredibly neat. Not a hope, not on my best day can I hope to put that together. That really does look like a circuit board. Jesus. Okay, okay. Let, let's hope you left some minerals behind. Maybe, maybe you left some fossil, did you? Oh, actually, one second before we do that. All the pink is insulation. Look at the amount of ins... Oh, wow, that is some enormous amounts of insulation you've got going on. That stuff's expensive. Well, that just explained the giant reed fiber farms. Oh, wait, wait. Is that fossil right there? Yeah, you left some fossil behind. You are human. Okay, well, maybe not... Like, maybe there's a little bit of humanity left. Oh, my God. A big thanks to ZE for that map. That is, yeah, that just makes me feel bad about my life choices. <laughs> Thank you very much. And since we've been seeing a lot of symmetry here, I want to actually go to another base that's incredibly symmetrical. Oh, what the? Is that? I didn't even notice the numbers. One, two, four, five. Okay, that's something to do with the musical. Oh, yeah, never mind. Okay. Save game file is attached. You can, you can go dig through this as much as you want because I'm sure I've only touched the surface of all the joys that are buried here. This next base was gifted to me by Fairy Big and it is called the Hardy System. Now, there is a lot, lot going on down here. Well, let's ignore all of that for a moment and we're just going to have a look at the top part of the map because this is something that sort of dragged me in after a short while. You'll notice there, there's a lot of symmetrical stuff going on here. Do you, do you get that warm, fuzzy feeling when you see, you know, symmetricality? Does it give you that glow inside? This base is going to give you a lot of that glow if you're into it. And you'll notice here you've got these uh, sort of waterfall-style solar panels down here with all the battery boxes beneath them. Then you've got the... Oh, actually, simplest way to start it would maybe be up here. This is the uh, little collection bowl for your regolith. But if we measure from, say, here all the way to the edge of the map, it's exactly 107 tiles. Oh, wait, I have... Yeah, one second. There we go. That's better. That is exactly 107 tiles all the way to the edge of the map. And if you measure this side, it's exactly 107 tiles the opposite direction as well. So this is perfectly central inside this. It's perfectly central to the center of the map. Then you'll notice, yep, all these mining drills are completely replicated. The sea miners here on the same side also replicated. Telescope replicated. Statues replicated. Detectors replicated. Everything is replicated. Even when it comes down here, let's uh, grab up the plumbing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now the right hand side, the rockets are not quite finished yet, but it's it's basically an identical setup on each side. Merge. So you've got it, it, below here is the sensor for each rocket, and then below that is these little steam turbines. They're designed to destroy all the heat that comes out of those rocket engines. So, oh damn it, wrong one. If you check the conveyor rails, you can see the conveyor rails spinning around here and sucking all the heat out of the tiles. It's... Oh my god, they're not symmetrical, though. Well, okay, I'm not going to blame him for that. That's honestly... The amount of symmetricality that already went in is just incredibly impressive. I don't think I'd have the patience. Even down here, you can see there was a... It's perfectly symmetrical down until they get to the rot jet suit docks, but then there's an anti-entropy nullifier in the way so they can't actually install these on the opposite side. Kind of a bummer, I know. Personally, if I was going this far, I would probably just... Yeah, I'd use dev tools, but yeah, there was no dev tools used here as far as I can see. And, oh my god, just the amount of piping and just... Mm, 
even this even this section down here you'll notice it's all replicated left to right even the paintings are replicated it's just crazy one second nope oh, nope never mind okay then uh, but barring the absolutely incredibly over the top perfectly symmetrical space section let's just have a quick look at some of the nuts and bolts of this sucker yeah no 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 that's too much Okay, there's liquid hydrogen on both sides, and then you've got your liquid oxygen in the middle. Uh, for the actual cooling on that, where does that even come from? One moment. There is a lot going on here, but oh yeah, this, the aqua tuners up here are what provides the cooling for the liquid hydrogen and the liquid oxygen. Uh, oxygen setups here are in the middle. One second. Gas overlays. Okay, so I presume... Are they using gas filtration? What the... Oh my god. I mean... I, w I was looking at this and I thought, oh, I'll just have a quick look at the gas overlay. Oh my sweet Jesus! <laughs> okay. How? Oh, every tile is occupied. This shouldn't be possible. Okay, I'm, I'm presuming this is powerless gas filtration to, to siphon it. I am not digging through that. I, I, no, no. <laughs> respect, mad respect. There's no way I could handle that. Oh my god. Okay then, so um, yeah, that's the um, that, that's the, the oxygen setup. <laughs> okay, let's go down and look at some of the more saner parts of the base. Hopefully, hopefully saner parts of the base. Oh my god, they've actually built all the way along the, uh, what should we call this stuff, the neutronium on the side. They've actually used this area. Normally I just seal it, well, I just brick it in because there's no point. But they seem to have put bunches of cooling down here. You'll see the odd aqua tuner steam turbine on top, all for doing little bits of cooling. I presume that's to cool down this sleet wheat farm, which is right beside it. Yeah, that's some pretty chilly wild sleet wheat. But just below that, we've got... Okay, this, this is gonna... where it starts getting more confusing again. Alright, this is the Dreco farms. Right. So over here you see you've got all the plastic Drecos. So there's actually a small population of regular glossy Drecos left in here. And then they breed up and they breed glossy directed eggs. Those glossy directed eggs get dumped over this side where they get sheared. This is sort of a starvation ranching of glossy directlets. They'll still keep growing their coats even if you don't feed them, so you can get lots of plastic this way. And this is your reed fiber variant, which does pretty much the same thing, though there doesn't seem to be any critters over this side at the moment. All right, but uh, if we check the the automation or the uh, shipping overlay, you can see it's very simple, very straightforward. <laughs> Uh, automation wise, yeah, not too complex at all. Looks, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I totally understand all of this. Okay, though there is a heater there. Okay, that's for taking care of the heat. Output cycle, activation. Okay, that's for opening and closing the doors. And over here we have a sensor for oxygen. Okay, to what? You know what? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. That's just uh, your standard, uh, standard uh, Draco farms. Now we come down to the hatch farms. Um, yeah, this is even more straightforward. <laughs> It's perfectly simple. Very easy. Okay, no, no. All right, this is actually not too bad. I think I've got this. All right. This auto sweeper here is what uh, controls the population. You'll see that that one can reach that conveyor loader up there, while as this one down here can't. This one's job is to basically take the igneous rock and stock up the critter feeder and remove any of the items from here that are, you know, uh, coal, that kind of stuff. Oh, and meat any meat, and eggs-wise, the eggs get sent up here, but only when this automation kicks in, output sensor. If the uh, the current egg count is above four, so if there's more than four eggs in here, this activates this, this activates the auto sweeper, the auto sweeper dumps the eggs into this, then they go up here, uh, over this direction, up here, and then they get sort of cycled through the top of every single enclosure. If we check the room over here, you'll see the enclosures are actually huge. So the eggs go around the top, Oh, damn it. This game freezes a lot of me. It goes around the top here, and depending on what these critter sensors detect, if there's below or above a certain amount of eggs, it drops them off in the required section. Pretty interesting way of doing things. This would melt my brain, though, the amount of just shipping and conveyor loaders and automation all crammed into one spot. Ooh, it's like someone's trying to break my brain today. All right, uh, down here we've just got some... Oh, and all the excess eggs that have nowhere to drop off into. Same with these ones up here. They all get sent down here, and yes, that's where all of them, uh, the, yeah, that's the, the local evolution chamber. All right, Ooh, before we go any further with this one, just something I'd like to point out that's a little bit odd compared to most bases on this one. Well, okay, barring the obvious stuff. Oxygen overlay, you see most of this map is oxygenated, but not only is it oxygenated, 
the dupes don't get into Atmos suits until they get to edge cases. Uh, for example, here's an Atmos suit dock set up over here for going down into this, uh, well, that's the oil biome down there. And then they also have another set of Atmos suit docks over here for going into this section, which is more of an industrialized area, also vacuum sealed. And another set of Atmos suit docks at the top for when they go into the space area. For going all through these areas, it's all oxygenated. Even, even here where they have all this hydrogen, you notice down here where the duplicates will actually do all the grooming. It's oxygenated so that they can walk in and out without suits. I've... That would mean the temperature would have to be good for them as well. Nice. That's... That's difficult to do. It's normally just so easy to dump them into Atmos suits and never worry about the environment again. But this is actually terraforming on a massive scale. Alright. Uh, next up. We've got a few different crops down here. We've got your... Uh, ah, pips. Your pips down here. That's just a, a small little ranching section. Then you've got your... Your dust caps, wild grown. You've got a steam vent here, which is idle. This looks to be a very complex way of shunting it all in. And then you want to have multiple vents sealed off, depending on how hot the temperature is. So the 500 degree stuff only gets in one vent port. And then when it gets cool enough, it gets let into the rest of it. Okay, down here we've got your just standard oil. Well, as, as standard as any oil setup can be on this map, when you check the piping overlay. <laughs> I have... Oh my god, okay, so... Crude oil comes in, petroleum goes out, and then it gets stockpiled here before. If you follow that up, it goes all the way to the top of the map. And I think it gets fed into the rockets or maybe into the cooling system. I'm not even sure. It just seems there is piping everywhere. Actually, what's the gas overlay look like? Oh, that's actually pretty tame. I was expecting it to be chaos. Power? Okay, then. Yeah, fine, fine. Yeah, let's just have a little bit more look at some of the... Uh, like this one here... There's an oil well right beside a bunch of punchy pepper nuts. And you notice that there's actually two Atmos suit docks here so that when people go in, they have something to actually pump the oil with. But look how crammed in it is. There was no space. And there's even like a one-tile visco gel lock so that they can go in and out without, uh, you know, without having to go into a bad atmosphere. Very nicely done. This whole thing has been crammed in, like just absolutely squeezed in in places. Like, here's another set of Atmos suit docks. Like, the amount of Atmos suit docks that are just scattered about the place to go into inhospitable areas is insane. <laughs> like, just normally everyone does one Atmos suit dock outside your area, but now imagine you have to do one for every location. Like, there's one up here, one up here. I think, yeah, there's three of them here on the screen at the same time. Three separate Atmos suit dock areas. We don't even have to travel too far more to find another one, I'd say. Okay, and, ow. Industrial sauna, whole bunch of petroleum. Oh, there's a petroleum boiler around here somewhere. We'll find it. We'll find it in a little bit. Now, if you like slicksters, you're gonna love this place. Look at the amount of slicksters in there. If we just click on this, you can see there's 15 slicksters just in that one tile. Over here, we've got 13. If, actually, let's just do a room overlay thing. Okay, 60, 59, 60. Oh, wow. That's... You can hear them all just going off as they try and consume all the carbon dioxide, which they're doing a really good job of. Oh my god, that's so many slicksters. How is there that many slicksters everywhere? What are you doing down there? I have no idea why these are even here. No idea. I haven't got a clue. Okay, well, this is the Slickster area. That's... Oh my god, can you hear them? That's too many. That's too many Slicksters. You're mad. All right, all right. I, I, I've tried looking around this base and I give up. I just cannot figure it. I can't figure it out in my brain. It's just... It's like this oil well here. This is an oil well. There's... What is all this extra stuff around it? There is an awful lot of automation involved. And I'm not quite sure why. It's an oil well. Come on. <laughs> madness. Okay, so let's just enjoy the madness. And I'm going to stop trying to overanalyze things too much. The one thing that I could figure out for sure was the living area in the center. So you've got your, was it? Six, twelve beds here. You got your dining chairs. Twelve beds, dining chairs, twelve beds, dining chairs. So this is sort of the core of the base. This is where all the sleeping and eating goes on. Uh, where are the bathrooms, actually? Oh, wait, there are the bathrooms over there. And we've even got showers to go with them. Yep, yeah, unidirectional, so you have to go in out. Okay, so there's the bathrooms. We've got something stable to hold on to. Now, down here, you may be wondering what this is. So am I. What the hell is going on there? Um... Right. Right. What the hell? <laughs> I'm sure there's a function to all of this, but I'll be damned if I'm going through it. No way, that's... What insanity is this? Okay, we've got gristleberry, pinch of pepper nuts, fried mushrooms, meat. Alright, so these are all individual sorting settlements. 
Right, so everything's sorted into its own individual stockpile, and each one has a weight plate to decide how much of each it gets stored. But dear lord. Okay, then we've got your two chefs down here. And this is all still in an oxygen environment. Yeah, okay, except for these are CO2 pits to store the food in. Okay then, okay then. But that is so much automation. Oh my god. Where is it? There was some other weird stuff that was going on here. Yeah, it's just, uh, I think what confuses me about this is... Uh, not uh, Lack of organization is the wrong word. You've got uh, this over here, so this sleep piece. But then you've got this over here, which does the, the water... No, uh, the water weeds or the lettuce? Yeah, the water weed. Now, normally what would happen is someone would just build that parallel to this last device over here so the two of them are equal, but it seems to be more... Okay, if we take it and look at the big picture, it's almost like a pyramid design where this far end down here is the base of the pyramid and then it sort of goes up to the top here. So it's like you use more of the left-hand side of the map and you use less as you go right. And then, okay, this over here was a late addition, I think. So it almost seems like a pyramid design, which is why these are all out of alignment with each other as they're slowly compressing inwards the further it goes on. But it's got this sort of claustrophobic feel to it. Like, over here, what what is going on? These are all storage containers. So you've got your bleach stone, whatever, oxalite, all these things that off-gas, but they're put in this sort of corridor here, and it just feels so cramped. It's amazing. Oh, sorry, wrong button. All right, and then, yeah, over here you've got your hospitals, for some reason, with a... I don't know, it feels all very... Very much like they were trying to compress the base down, and this almost feels like the game was intended to be played. Small, cramped, and really chaotic. But, yeah, I, I can't figure out half of this. There's just too much insanity going on. Uh, over here, we've got a petroleum boiler. Uh, double layered. Though you can, yeah, you can walk all the way basically in and out of it for complete servicing. Always a nice bonus, I will admit. Uh, the whole thing is vacuum sealed, of course. So the whole way around the edge, if you check on the gas, there's no... Wow. Look at the size of that vacuum area. Those are really hard to do. Uh, but, um, so this whole place is vacuumed off. You've got a hydrogen gas vent in here and a little bit of a steam turbine room in the bottom. Oh, that's to cool down the hydrogen vent. All right, so there's your petroleum boiler. Petroleum, though, where does that go? Okay, that goes back over to the five petroleum generators in the steam room back there. Though I do like that it's all massively layered in tiles. Look at that, one, two, three, four, five. It's like five tiles deep all the way around at least. Right, just to make sure nothing breaks. Uh, up here, though, where is it at? Ah. Over here, we've got yourself a little industrial box. So you've got your metal refineries. The uh, petroleum from that goes, rotates through here. And we have a few natural gas generators to dispose of the natural gas from the oil reservoirs. Okay, then. But I think the real, just sort of crowning insanity in this is this area up here. The sheer symmetricality of it just breaks my brain. Well, okay, actually, less that... No, this... Okay, the symmetricality I can understand because you just see it. It's just a mirror image. It's fine. It's perfectly normal. But this over here, I have no idea. But I, I can't understand how your brain works. Actually, let's go have a look at the overlays and have a see. Oxygen overlay, to be expected. That's, uh, yeah, considering the amount of oxygen you need for everything and the sheer amount of atmosphere docks you've got everywhere, seems kind of normal. Uh, Ventilation-wise, wow. Oh, I suppose you do have to oxygen it everywhere. Ooh, that reminds me, I want to go quick, quickly check out the oxygenation facilities. Oh, wow, the entire map is oxygenated from this space setup up here. This weird, almost mantis, weird look like thing. So what happens is this produces all the oxygen for everything. It's filtered via passive gas filters. And then all that oxygen gets filtered out and comes down here. And then it sort of comes down here and spreads out its wings to the right and to the left. So if you'll zoom out here, you can see. And then oxygen lines just drop down and they basically dump oxygen off at different layers of the base. That's... That's an incredibly complicated oxygenation system. You'd need it, though. For a base this size and having that much of the area oxygenated, it's sort of necessary. Let's have a look at the conveyor overlay, and let's hope it doesn't crash the game. Dear Lord. Okay, so all of it looks reasonably normal, except for this here. That's the whole cooking area. That cooking area is the most complex kitchen I have ever seen. It, it deserves to be on Top Chef or Kitchen Rules or whatever that chef program is that everyone seems to love. Plumbing-wise... Oh, God. Okay, just... Have a quick look at that space area. Oh my god. So, yellow I'm presuming is the petroleum... What's the... Going on with the other ones? Ah, super coolant in the other ones. Alright then. Okay. Nicely done. That's, uh... Way too much piping. Just, just... No wonder my game is the game is chugging so much. Okay, power overlay. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, it's thinking about it. It's thinking... There we go. Okay. Actually, no. This is very human. 
All right. Okay, that, not so human, but everything down here below the space level, pretty normal. Nicely done. And, of course, the mode of jute. Let's see if we've got any minerals left. I'm betting no. I'm just going to go with a... Oh, wait. Oh, wow. I think there's loads of fossil left down here. Oh, man, you missed loads of it. That, that's just so much steel lying around the place. Not that you need it. It's just, you know, it's the principle of the thing that counts. A big thanks again to Fairy Big for that map. Um, sorry I could not decipher that more. That, that was just... No, no, I, I can't figure that out. I don't know what way your brain works, but my brain does not work that way. There, there was just so much automation and, uh, oh, conveyor loaders. It, it, it just, no, my brain couldn't handle it. But no, thanks very much. I'm going to attach the save. They, they agreed to let the save be uploaded. So if you want to have a go through this yourself and start peeling back the layers of this, there's an awful lot more here. I could probably spend hours trying to figure out how half that stuff works. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.